Hey gang, welcome back. I'm Mac Newton. I am in the gym. A lot of you are very familiar with the gym. And because you've been here many times working out with me online, and I want to thank you for that, all right? You know what, gang? It's not just the physical performance that really separates the winners from the losers. It's attitudes. From the high performers to the one who are considered also rants, to the people who just do the minimum to get by. You know what's the difference? Attitude is the difference. You know what? I was the kind of kid who was brought up without a lot of inspiration. I had small time ideas. I mean, to me as I grew up, I saw myself as just a kicker and a puncher in Taekwondo. I didn't see myself as someone as a player on an international stage. You must be kidding me. That required an entirely different attitude, different way of thinking. You know what? I was able to borrow some of that, some of that stuff from other people that I met along the way. People who had a different thought process. And in the first of my video blogs online, I want to talk to you about that very first step that I always take with any professional team or any athlete that I'm going to work with. I want to make sure they understand right from the beginning the most important part of this entire high performance concept is what goes on between your ears, your attitude. That is the number one thing. I'll tell you something, gang. You are going to get more out of life based upon your attitude than anything else. Make no doubt about it. I'm not really that concerned with your talent. You know, because talent, well, you might say talent's cheap. Everyone's got talent to a certain degree. You know what? But what makes the top performers is not just the amount of talent they have, but their thought process, their commitment, their determination, uh, their decision making. In other words, all of these actually, these perspectives of attitude. And that's what I want to talk to you about. You know, the world is full of talented underachievers. I mean, we've all gone to school with them. People who have tremendous potential. What does potential mean? Everything you're capable of, beloved, but you just haven't done it yet. Okay? So now we're going to talk about that one element, that characteristic that's going to allow you, you, to touch your talent, to touch that innate ability to get at it. I've already written it out on the board. Let's take a look. All right? Let's take a look. I've got a mathematical equation that's going to prove to you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that your attitude is the most important element, and I don't care how skilled you may be. IA plus AA times A equals PPP. -P -P. What does it mean? It means IA is inborn attributes. That's talent. That's what you're born with. That's that part that everyone sees early on when you're born. Maybe you're able to pick up a ball. You throw it a certain way. Maybe uh, you're, you, you immediately, one day you start to sing or you start to dance. And everyone sees that talent, that inborn attribute. That's something that can't be denied. And everyone wants to show it off. Oh, watch. Look. Look at this. Look at that talent. Yes, but is that enough to make that person successful? The answer is no. We need something else. Well, let's, let's put it out here. AA, that's called acquired attributes. What is that? Well, that's something we all acquire along the way. It's experience. That's something we get by using our talent just a bit. Our practice, uh, uh, our, uh, uh, our failures and our successes, our comments from other people. This is our, our acquired attributes. Now we add these two together. This is IA. In more talent, added to AA, acquired attributes. That's going to give us a total. But we're going to multiply that by the X factor. And the X factor is A. Well, you know what it is already, because I already told you. It's your attitude. Our attitude. Well, everyone knows we should get our attitude right. Everyone knows that. It's not a secret. But why do so few people have a good attitude? You know why? Because they don't know where it comes from. They don't know how to get one when they need it the most. Everyone knows that they need a good attitude, and everyone knows when they need a good attitude. People can tell when their attitude is bad, but they don't know what to do about it. Let me ask you the question. Answer it right now for me. Where does your attitude come from? Right. You don't know. 
Very few people do. What I'm here to tell you, your attitude comes from, comes from your expectations of how you think things are going to work out. How you think this event is going to turn out. What's going to happen at the end of the day? If you think things are going to work out well, you've got a great attitude. If you think things are going to work out poorly, well, then your attitude could, could use a little adjustment. You could have a bad attitude. But that's where your attitude comes from. It comes from your expectations of the outcomes. Now, where do your expectations come from? Well, I'll tell you that too. It comes from the things you believe about yourself and the world you live in. The things you've accepted as true. Other people's opinions, experiences, failures, successes. Comparing yourself to other things. The things you believe. What do you believe about yourself that may not be in the best interest of your high performance? Whether it's a relationship, whether it's a, whether it's a, a sports performance, whether it's a song. What do you believe about yourself? So that means if we're going to get a really good attitude to keep it, we've got to be able to manufacture our beliefs in advance. We've got to be able to control our beliefs, change our beliefs. And that's the great thing about it, because those things are subjective. Yeah, yeah, they're subjective. We can, we can manufacture, we can convince ourselves that we believe ourselves to be this way or that. In fact, that's how we got to be the way we are. We believe what other people said. We believe the experience we had, and you add them up over time, it adds up to your fundamental belief about yourself and the world around you. And that creates your expectations under certain conditions about the outcomes, and from there comes your performance. All right, here we go. Or at least your attitude, from your attitude comes your performance. All right, here we go. IA, talent, plus AA, experience or Practice multiplied by your attitude equals permanent or predictable peak performance. That's what I've got written out. Let's go over it again. Inborn attributes, attitude, acquired attributes, multiplied by attitude gives us permanent or predictable peak performance. Nothing is more distracting or nothing is more um, uh, stress producing that a, whether it's a business performer getting ready to put on a, a great um, a, a proposal or getting ready to make a, a, a great uh, presentation or a, 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 an ice skater getting ready to take the ice or a baseball player getting ready to take the mound or a basketball player getting ready to take the court and not knowing who's going to show up. Are you going to be that the great performer or are you going to be the one doesn't perform at a high level. In other words, unpredictable. We want to be predictable. You want to know who's going to show up, don't you? You want to know you're going to do a great job. You want to know you're up for that moment. You're up for it when it counts the most. That's what you want. You got to have a great attitude for that. Okay. This, we'll give it to you. Now, I've broken it down. We've got two players here, Tom and Phil. We're going to figure out which one you want on the team, <laughs> Tom or Phil. So let's go through the numbers, the math. Let's do the math. Everyone says, do the math. Let's do the math to see, does my concept really work? Tom, let's go to number one. IA, inborn attributes. On the terms of talent, Tom, on a scale of one to 10, has a talent level of five. In other words, he's okay. He's middle of the road, you know? Maybe even better than most, okay? But Phil, Phil is that real exception. He is that one that when you see him walk on the court, when you see him walk on the diamond or the playing field, you think, ah, oh, star. You want that guy. He just looks, or that, or that girl. They just look like they're a star. They've got that feeling. They've got that aura around them. Everything they do looks phenomenal. Their talent is an eight on a scale of one to 10. Cannot be denied. They are amazing. Second area, acquired attributes, practice. Tom practices six. Well, so does Phil. They both have a fairly good or above average work ethic, okay? 
They both are practicing and gaining the same amount of experience at the same pace. All right, so let's see where we stand so far. Tom, talent, five, practice, acquired attributes, six, total 11. Phil, talent, eight, big time before we Talent, I need a practice, six, acquired attributes, same as Tom, subtotal, 14. Now, we get to, we get to the uh, X factor. We get to the thing that really determines what the winner is. And that is, of course, you know, your attitude. The winners always have a good attitude. Always. The secret is being able to control that when it really matters. To have the attitude that you need, especially under stress. My great grandma used to say, you know what? You want to find out what's really inside of somebody? Bump them a little bit and see what spills out. See what, see what they do under pressure. And people are always saying to me, they're always saying, hey Mac, you know what? That really didn't count. You know why? Because I was stressed out. I was stressed out. You know what? That's when you find out who you really are. So let's bring in some stress. All right. We're going to multiply that by the attitude. Tom has a great attitude. On a scale of 1 to 10, his attitude is number 9. Tom is, believes in himself. He sets goals. He writes it down. He does his work. He is absolutely relentless when it comes to making sure he has a good attitude because he learns somewhere along the way that all winners can manufacture their expectations and they can change their beliefs into anything they want them to be to be consistent with the outcome that they want. Somewhere along the line, Tom has figured this out and his attitude is a nine. You add, that's multiplied. 9 times 11, 99 is his overall score. Let's see about Phil. All right? Total, subtotal score, 14. All right? He's still about average here. Maybe a little above average in his attitude. Not bad. He's not a bad guy. But he's got so much talent. He doesn't do all of these things that Tom does. Maybe he doesn't, he's not an obsessive goal setter. Maybe he doesn't go out of his way to spend time with others that have achieved in the past to find out those key elements of skill that determine winners and losers, okay? So he doesn't do that. So his attitude is five. So five times 14, 74. Not only is Tom the more predictable, permanent performer by a little, it's by a lot by 25 points. I want Tom on my team, who do you want? We all go to look at Phil and think, man, his talent blows me away. And every once in a while, Phil's gonna have a day that's outstanding, just absolutely blows you away. Phil's gonna have one of those days, but you know what? Tom's gonna show up every day, every day and give you a performance that you can take to the bank. Who do you want on your team? Who do you want on your team? I know what you're saying. You want Tom. You want nine of them. You want five of them. You want 20 of them. You know? Yeah, you do. Because you can take that to the bank. Now, that's the first thing we have to realize on our path to peak performance. The, fine, the, the uh, mathematical equation. IA plus AA times A equals PPP. There. Okay. That's the start of our journey. I'm Mac Newton. I'll see you back in my gym real soon.